today. You brought out a stat today that Cleveland, excuse me, that Minnesota, the White Sox, and Detroit have not won in nine games. They're all in fourteen in the last fourteen combined games. And Cleveland has won the division. Can you please concede that Cleveland has won the division? I'm not going to concede that Cleveland has won the division. I can't concede that Cleveland is this good yet. I cannot do that. There's, there's, I, you know. Can you? It's like. Go ahead. Can you concede that Minnesota is this bad? No. You have to look at the lineup they're trotting out there every night right now. Mm-hmm. It's. It leaves a lot. I mean. I'm always in favor of the Twins failing, mm-hmm. as you know. But really, if you look, I'm going to look up tonight the lineup that they trotted out there against Kansas City in a game they lost 11 to two. Well, it was and three how, to two until the eighth inning. Yeah, the eight run eighth inning, and how many of those were unearned? <laughs> a lot, a lot of them. Yeah, a, a lot of the runs were unearned. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, let me, let me see here. So this is the lineup that the Twins trotted out tonight, and I will read the batting averages as well. Okay. Just for public consumption. Denard Span batting 298. Okay. I would expect that from him, that's fair. Sure. He's, he's a pretty decent hitter. Matt Tolbert hitting 178. That's not good. Now, Matt Tolbert's not a good hitter. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's that bad, but he's not. A good hitter. Right, but he's pressing the service because of uh, Nishioka's okay. injury. Yeah. yeah. And Alexi Casillo is not in the lineup tonight. Mm-hmm. And Alexi Casillo has been their shortstop, and Alexi Casillo has not really been getting the job done in that role. Mm-hmm. Defensively or that, with and, the bat, of course. Yeah, and that's something that they are going to have to deal with. Injuries or not, you can't blame that on injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Kubel's hitting three fifty one, and I'm not going to expect Jason Kubel to hit three fifty one all year. Okay. Uh, Justin Morneau is hitting 224. I don't know what to make of Justin Morneau right now. Yeah, We know he's better than that, but concussions are pretty nasty. Mm-hmm. Um, Michael Kadire is hitting 226, and Michael Kadire is an interesting case. At second base? Because he's not hitting, and he's playing second base right now, and there is absolutely no reason to have Michael Kadire playing second base. Yeah. It's, yeah. Jim Tomey's hitting 214. Now, Jim Tomey, I warned about this. He's 40 years old. He's not going to hit 300 again or whatever he hit last year. And you cannot re- you cannot rely on that. Yeah. You're just, you're, I mean, is, is, does he still have the, is he still a threat to go deep every single time he steps in? Yes. Mm-hmm. But he's not going, I don't, I wouldn't expect him to hit for a high average. He, he's going to get himself on base, but. I don't want to call his last year a fluke, but I think that's hard. You can't not rely on that. This is the stat that you need to know from this game. Other, the eighth inning is immaterial because Aaron Crow pitched a, a scoreless eighth in, or a scoreless top of the eighth, and Soria, I have to think, or, or Crow would have shut down either. Hello. I'm right here. Sorry. So Soria or, or Crow, I think, would have shut him down in the ninth inning just because they're not swinging the bats. But when you get seven walks off of Sean O'Sullivan, who did not have his best stuff, and he's not with his best stuff, so he's just right. not a good pitcher. When you get seven walks off Sean O'Sullivan and scored. Let me, let me look at the line on O'Sullivan here because yeah. Sean O'Sullivan, he somehow has a 3 4 3 earned run average right now. Yeah. Uh huh. Sean O'Sullivan, and the fun thing is I was I tweeted uh, at the beginning of this game after the Twins scored two in the first, actually, mm-hmm. largely by the help of a Kansas City error. Yeah, but um, they scored in the first did, inning there, too, yeah. because of an error. They did score two in the first, mm-hmm. and um, at that point I tweeted, well, it looks like the Twins might get one tonight because Sean O'Sullivan's pitching. And I was quickly informed by a Royals fan that I'm a douche. Mm-hmm. I am for making the observation that Sean O'Sullivan is not a very good. Pitcher. He's not. But let's, you walk let's go seven. Over... You walk seven. That's not good. Yeah. But but let's go over the line tonight on uh, Sean O'Sullivan, sure. who, as we have established, is not a good pitcher. This is what he did to the Twins tonight: six innings, mm-hmm. two hits, two runs, one earned. Mm-hmm. Seven walks, seven walks, and three strikeouts. 
you can't Minnesota score. with runners in scoring position, 0 for 6, 8 left on base. That's And you look at the names. Uh, this, the, they keep track of, you know, who comes up with runners in scoring position and two out and does not get them in. Runners left in scoring position, two out. Mm-hmm. These aren't these aren't the scrubs. Tommy Kadire Morneau. Yeah. Those aren't the scrubs. Those are the guys that they expect to get the hits in those situations. So, I mean, we were halfway through. We were talking about Tommy. Danny Valencia is hitting 217. And Valencia had a heck of a year last year, but I think that was... I don't, I don't want to say he's a bad player, but I don't think he's going to hit 311 again. Steve Holm was their catcher. He's hitting 118. Minnesota's catcher position right now is a black hole. An absolute black hole. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's a, it's a position place. that they have the most money committed to. Mm-hmm. And Twins fans will tell you this. Um, in 09, they had Jose Morales, who's currently got a job with Colorado, and he's doing a pretty nice job over there. Right. And Wilson Ramos, whom they traded for Matt Capps last year. Mm-hmm. Very highly touted prospect. He's hitting over 300 for Washington right now. They had depth at that position. Yeah. But they have Maurer locked up. I guess they figured it was all expendable. They got rid of it. Maurer's health is in question now, and there is nothing there. Yeah. Um, left field, Renee. I'm got, I, how, how's this pronounced? You've been listening or watching. R- Renee, what's his name? Tassani? Tassani. 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 Yeah, all right. He's betting ninth. He's hitting 214. He's the rookie. He's up while Delman Young's on the disabled mm-hmm. list. And... Brian Dunsing took the loss, although he only allowed the two earned runs in seven innings. It was the bullpen. Joe Nathan. Why would you put Joe Nathan in up down one run? I mean, I the, think to me, it's not a high leverage situation, but you... That's a situation that you can't allow any runs. Yeah. I mean, that's a situation, I mean, you, you have, the, you have... This is something that a lot of people argue with. The closers and the setup men, and I don't know who the twin setup man is right now, honestly. Right. It's sort of by committee. I guess Maharis is in there somewhere, and they just and sort of throw in guy. Glenn Perkins and whoever they think they can get outs with at that time. Mm-hmm. So I mean, and that's another problem that we didn't even that that you can go over with the Twins. But you bring in Joe Nathan in a three-two game in the eighth inning, uh, one hit, one walk, three runs, two earned. Victimized a bit by his defense, to be fair, but his ERA isn't even ten right now. You bring Joe Nathan in when you're down. Five runs. You don't bring Joe Nathan in when you're down one run. That that's just pitiful managing by Garden Hire. Joe Nathan should not be pitching in high leverage situations right, right. now. If, I mean, coming into the season, you know, I as a Tigers fan, I'm watching the Twins as much as I can mm-hmm. because I feel that they're a threat. And you look at them, and I'm like, and I was really, really interested to see how Joe Nathan would perform. Coming back, he's 36 years old. He's coming off the Tommy John surgery. So I've tried to look at his, as many of his outings as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. And there's no two ways about it. He's not looked good. I got, dating all the way back to opening day, he came in on opening day, gave up two hits, two walks. He barely escaped that game with the save. Toronto's hitters bailed him out a little right. bit. He had a couple, he had a couple scoreless He had three scoreless outings in a row. Then he had the back-to-back in long Tampa saves Bay. in Tampa. And that's when they took him out of the role. They put in Matt Capps, And then he gave up three in Baltimore. And then he had two more scoreless outings. And then tonight. Mm-hmm. So, Joan, I guess maybe they thought he was coming around. I don't know. But Joe Nathan has not been consistently good at all this year. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely question bringing him in there. Or it's just one of those things that, I mean, you kind of wonder – you know, maybe, you know, sometimes I I strongly believe this, that, you know, let's say you're a good defense in football and your quarterback just makes dumb interceptions and puts you back onto a short field over and over and over. I mean, if Gardy really didn't believe that his hitters could do anything, then why not put in Joe Nathan? I mean, you you well, can't. They they hadn't they hadn't they hadn't gotten a run since the first inning. They hadn't gotten a hit, I think, since like the fifth. So, well, and what does that say about thing. what does that say about the what what Guardy believes about the ability for the lineup to come back? And that's another thing I like to point out. I mean, not the lineup, but the defense. Yeah. What do you, I mean? What every single time you hear somebody talking about the Twins, okay, they're going to throw strikes mm-hmm. and they're going to play good defense. Right. 
you don't you I mean that's you're gonna get that out of them mm-hmm. and it's been a large part of their success. Uh four walks tonight, but more importantly, they gave up eleven runs and all but four of them were unearned. Yeah. Two errors. Jim Hoy came in to try and close out the eighth. He gave up four runs, but none of them were earned. Mm-hmm. Jose Maharas gave up a run. It was unearned. Dunstan gave up three runs. One of those was unearned. Nathan gave up three runs. One of those was unearned. Mm-hmm. Terrible, inexcusable defense. Two Only two errors, but Kadir's throwing error and then the Morneau the missed Morneau catch miss error. Catch. Yeah. I mean, Morneau is a good is not a bad defensive first baseman. No. Uh, Kadire should be, has no business being at second, but that's, I mean, the Twins have been stretched very thin. Yeah. And before, and at the beginning of the season, I said, the Twins at face value are not deep. Have are, they have a good lineup, but if by chance something happens to them, and a lot of things have happened to them in April, there's not there's the depth is very poor. Mm-hmm. And based on what they're trotting out there, they're trying they're trying to fill in. They're throwing Kadir at second. They're they're trying to rely on guys like Holm and Butera and Tolbert as everyday players, and and Tassani. And you you're not going to win like that. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. The offense has done nothing. The bullpen has been has had their moments. Every time it's, they've they've gotten good starts. Dunsink wasn't terrible tonight, but mm-hmm. I mean, so that's a team in disarray right now. A lot of disarray, and um, I mean, you can say what you, you can say what you want about them, but before we get to I the... mean, at, at, at some point they, they're going to have to turn around. Somebody's going to have to get healthy. Somebody's going to have to start hitting. But right now, yeah. it's 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 not good, and and if you can see what a bad start can do to a team. So at they're they're at nine and seventeen. They're already nine games back, and. Um, their run differential is the worst in Major League Baseball by a rather large margin. It's not all that close. They have they have allowed 57 more runs than they have scored. Like they've they've given up a hundred. They've given up 139 that's runs and they've, only scored, and they've only scored 82. So that's a difference of 57 runs. Yeah. Negative 57 in the run differential. The second worst team in Major League Baseball in terms of run differential. It's a tie mm-hmm. between the White Sox and the Houston Astros at minus 34. Good segue into the White Sox. 23 run difference. Yeah. Good segue into the White Sox. Is there anything that you want to mention to them before we get oh, to the, the Tigers? The, the White Sox look dreadful, too. I mean, it's not like Chicago. I mean, Chicago, this is a team that just took two in uh, New, York. New York. Largely due to a miracle start by Phil Umber mm-hmm. and two miracle catches by Brent Lillibridge. Yeah. But... You still look at um, what's going on. The bullpen is just unbelievably bad for them right now. He brought in Thornton, who gives up three runs, or four runs, three earn, and an inning in a third of an inning. And I mean, Thornton. They, Thornton came in as their closer, and his ERA right now is sitting at eight six four. And now they're getting beat up in Baltimore. Uh, they're at home, which is oh even wow worse. against Baltimore. Yes. I mean, Baltimore, Chris Tillman, who's the RA after five innings of one run ball tonight, is down to 5 2 5. Mike Gonzalez, who's been a disaster area this year, yeah. two innings, four strikeouts, no base runners. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. The thing about the White Sox is this looked like a potent lineup at one point, but you look at the guys that aren't hitting. Adam Dunn's hitting 160. Adam Dunn hasn't looked close all month. Is he still at first? He was at first tonight. He's been at first for a lot of games this year. I, I don't understand why he's at first. I haven't seen – I honestly – I admittedly haven't seen as much of the White Sox as I would like. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I've, I've watched – They're used, the problem with them is that the tw- Tigers usually start at seven and the Twins and the White Sox usually both start at eight. And the White Sox have been falling behind so early lately that, you know, you just sort of, okay, they're losing again. Yeah. But um, Dunn was at first tonight. Canerco was DHing. Canerco's hitting all right. Canerco's at 286. I would expect that out of him. Yeah. Quentin's hitting 294. He's having a nice year. Mm-hmm. Um, Wonder when the look, injury bug's going to hit him. Yeah, he'll get hurt eventually, I know. But then you look. Tian, Mark Tian is hitting 282. I don't know how that's happening. Yeah. But Dunn's hitting 160. has not been close at all. 
I mean, two more left on base, or uh, three left on base, two more strikeouts tonight. Uh, Alex Rios is hitting 163. Dreadful. And excuse me. Gordon, Gordon Beckham's hitting 194. There, and, and one, yeah. Juan Pierre, who's not really much of a player to begin with, is not playing good defense. He's hitting 243. His redeeming quality is his speed, and he needs to get on if he wants to use that speed, and he isn't him, him getting on. Right. He does walk a lot, so Pierre's been pretty much useless to them. Mm-hmm. Um, Alexi Ramirez is hitting 265. I don't know what's in it. It's, that's below what he should be. Przinski's at 264. That's about right. You can't expect Przinski to run your offense for yeah. you. And, of course, Przinski has no arm defensively, so it's, and he made a throwing error tonight right. and a pass ball. So, heck of a series for him. He has homer tonight, so good for him, I guess. Yeah, I got one. Alex Rios, so good for him. Woohoo. But they're down to 10 and 18. They're also nine back in Cleveland. And their run differential is the second worst in face. It's, I mean, it's not smoke and mirrors here. It's not like the White Sox. They're losing Sox in like the ninth like, inning. And yeah, it's, I mean, the White Sox for a while, they were losing in the ninth. The White Sox and Twins both had a couple of ninth inning losses, but lately they've just been losing. Mm hmm. I mean, it's not like smoke and mirrors. They're one hit away or they're close or whatever. They're getting beat up. Yeah. These are two teams that are getting beat up right now. And uh, and I think that's the, the, that's the difference between the Tigers. The Tigers haven't been getting flat out beaten up in Cleveland. No, they haven't. But you're, you're, looking, at, you're looking at Chicago getting beat up. To, I mean, Baltimore put 11 on them last night. Mm-hmm. Kansas City put 11 on them. On a Minnesota last t- tonight and last night came back in the eighth inning on, uh, pop up on a base the running play that you a For base sure. running play that you would expect to see the Twins make right um, and not the Royals but um, yeah I mean they've had their share of one run games but largely they have not been all that close and I think that's you know that's dis- that's con- disconcerting for them. In Minnesota's case, you can put some of it on the injury bug. That's a fair argument. Yes. I mean, I don't expect me to have any sympathy for you, but it's fair to say, okay, we're getting hit hard by injuries. Yeah. But the guys that they do, but and you need to have a little bit of depth. Yeah, but that's not the whole thing. That's the, the fact that their roster isn't built for this sort of thing, and they were completely and totally unprepared for something like this. And uh, if you want to talk about, um, I mean, uh, Baseball Reference hasn't updated to the day yet, but. You can look at some of the numbers. You can look at the Twins' rotation. Mm-hmm. Liriano's been dreadful, and that's supposed to be. Well, I mean, you can argue that Carl Pavano is supposed to be their ace, but I say Liriano is supposed to be the best pitcher they have. Yes. And his ERA is nine one three. Even if you want to argue that Pavano is the ace of the staff, his ERA is five twelve. Mm-hmm. So the guys that are supposed to in Blackburn's at five fourteen, which shouldn't come as a total surprise. That's not the mark of a team that's losing in the late innings. That's Bad right. starting pitching. They've they, they've got three starting pitchers with the RAs over five. Mm-hmm. I mean Baker's been good, but he's still got a losing record. So you can you mean mm-hmm. Baker's at one and two with three one six. Yeah. Uh, I mean Dunsing lost for the first time tonight. Um, the bullpen. Matt Caps is Matt Caps has been what you'd expect, but then you look at Glenn Perkins. Glenn Perkins is the RA is below one. Mm-hmm. And nothing against Glenn Perkins, but it's not going to hold up. He's, I mean, I don't want, I don't know what his batting average on balls and play is, but it's got to be dramatically low. We talked about Nathan. Nathan's not getting it done. Dusty Hughes is a seven eight four. Uh, and we Jose Mah- we talked Jose Maharis has seven walks in eight innings. And we talked before the season about them just losing their whole bullpen, and they really didn't bounce back. And they didn't replace them. And I mean, I'm not at all surprised by the fact that their bullpen is not getting out. Mm-hmm. It does not surprise me in the slightest bit. I'm not at all surprised that their te- they have the worst earned run average in major in the American League. Mm-hmm. It doesn't surprise me. I, w- I mean, I would be surprised if the White Sox did. I would be surprised if the Tigers did. But if you'd have told me that one of those three teams would have the worst earned run average after April in the American League, I would have told you it's going to be the Twins. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... You can blame the injuries all you want, but the the fact is they're not hitting. They're not getting on base. They're second to last in on base percentage. They have the worst ERA. That's not. They're not. And 
they deserve to lose the games they're losing. Mm-hmm. It's not like okay, breaks are going against it. It's they're losing. Right. They're flat out losing. Yeah, they look like the Royals in the last week when in Texas and in Cleveland. I mean, they just they look yeah. dead. Those those six and, games. Or and if, and so I don't want to make it look like I'm just ripping on the Twins. The White Sox are in the exact same boat right now. Yeah, they're losing. They're bare, they're not much better than Twins in terms of on base percentage. They're uh, tenth in the American League in run average. So I mean, well, the Twins go to or excuse me, yeah, the Twins go to Chicago. They have a, yeah, they have a series this week in Chicago. So somebody's gonna have to snap out of it somehow. I mean, somebody's gonna have to win those games. Hmm. It's basically what I'm saying. And then after that, the Tigers go to Minnesota. Or, excuse me. So it's something's gonna have to give in the next week. Somebody's gonna have to start beating somebody. Yeah, I mean, and with Detroit, I mean, losing, getting swept at home yeah. by Seattle. Um, yeah, that's a bad. That was that was really. Yeah, and I don't have an excuse for that. Well, they, other than the two offense, of the three games were, yeah, they and, they hit two pitchers, but the Bedard game just blow, throws me for a loop. I don't know how to explain that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you can look; the Tigers are still two and a half games ahead of Chicago and Minnesota, so they've been the best of the bad teams yeah. to this point. And I mean, the Tigers have the it's it's they've they've done everything in spurts this year. Mm-hmm. They right now they're they're not pitching horrible. The bullpen completely imploded on them last night. Mm-hmm. Max Scherzer kind of imploded on himself last night, but Scherzer's ERA is under four. Verlander's ERA is under four. Um, Porcello looked really good tonight. They didn't lose that because of him. And you know, the Tigers are actually thir- um, coming into the night. This is updated. Okay. The Tigers had the worst bullpen ERA coming into the night. And um, I think a lot of that, their bullpen has only blown a couple games. A lot of the, a lot of that goes from the fact that their bullpen has entered games that they're already losing by a run or two, mm-hmm. and it's turned into a rout. Last night wasn't like that, but that's what happened in Seattle. It's in the Seattle series a couple times. Well, and they had the intentional walk strategy this evening, which you got upset about, but I, I really didn't follow that. I mean, I, no, I would, I was... Or excuse me, that you got upset with people criticizing it, I should say. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I mean, people are like, well, they walked the bases loaded, and look what happened. Yeah, that was a sad, if they leave, if they pitch to the guy with the runner at third and nobody out, or what, it was either nobody out or one out, I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, then that's still a sack fly, and they'll still lose the game. Right. So it's it's I mean it's apples and oranges at that point. You've got to load the bases. You've got to set up the four any base. I mean if if they hit a ground ball to second when you're playing the infield in, if they if you got a runner at third mm-hmm. and nobody else on and they hit a ground ball to second with the infield in, you can go home, but you're not guaranteed the out. Right. You load the bases, you go home. There's one out. You might even have a chance to go to first and get two out of yeah. it. Yeah. So it's smart strategy. That's I'm not questioning that, and I don't know why people were questioning it, honestly. Mm-hmm. But that's what you have to do in that situation. But um, I mean, I'm get I've gotten on Leland for a lot of things in this series. A lot of people are getting on Leland for that. Mm-hmm. That's stupid. Don't get on Leland for that. That's what that's what you're supposed to do in that situation. Um, I mean, they had the they they put the runner at first with either one or nobody. I honestly don't remember if there was an out at that point. Sure. I'm I think there was nobody out. But you've got a runner at first. There's nobody out. And you throw over first for pickoff throw, and you throw it away, and it goes to third. Why do you do that? I mean, he's picked off – the pitcher on the mound has picked off two guys this year. Right. But you have to you – get you've got to get the batter out. You cannot – you can't start playing long toss over at first base in that situation. That's stupid. It's an unforced error. And that's what set up the loss, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, worst case in it. I mean, you you got. I mean, you've got a guy at first with nobody out, which is not the situation you want in that at that point. But you're a ground ball away from just going from getting a double play ball, and you ruin that. A fly ball does nothing. So and you ruin that. So that's on him. That's on the pitcher. That was a stupid play, an inexcusably stupid play, mm-hmm. that that set up. Oh no! <laughs> Can I pause for a sure. moment? Nashville just tied the game with a minute left in regulation. Oh, wow. I should turn on the TV. Uh...
See, I want Vancouver to lose this game. So they just got to Luongo. Oh, let me oh. turn the sound down. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know how to turn that down. <laughs> speakers, speak. Aren't near. Okay, well, speakers anyway. are on mute. Yeah. Oh. Let me see. I this looked like it might have been kind of a soft. Oh my goodness. Do what? <laughs> Look at that uh, ball. I can't do it without turning on the sound. Last night, I was able to. Oh! Look at this. <laughs> You're not going to see one much softer okay, than Okay, I figured it out. My external speakers, if I turn them down... Okay, and now I can talk through my headset. So you can still hear me, right? I can okay. hear you perfectly. Yeah, I've got that it on mute, pretty so, tough and I know it's good. I know what's going on. No, no, so. no. I'm, I'm watching it now. I just had to turn down my extra. <laughs> but, yeah, but anyway, I mean, the error sets up that inning. And the fact is nobody in the lineup. Yeah, and that's, right and that's the other. You're off. And that's what it comes down to. You can't blame the pitching for that. I mean, sure, that the, the 13th inning error sets it up. But if they could hit, they wouldn't be in I'm the always 13th the kind of guy who blames. I'm always the kind of guy who blames the offense. Um, you know, with... with uh, well, that's what you're supposed to do yeah. in that situation. That's, I mean, their two runs came on two solo home runs. Yeah, I, they're not driving guys in. They're not setting it up. They got a leadoff double in the top 13th inning. Oh, and, oh, oh, oh! Close. Oh, that was close. Overtime. This is going to be a fun overtime. Oh, oh. they get it. Oh. <laughs> See, the difference in this game is I won't have to rant when somebody well, loses. Well, not even rant. You won't have you know, to. Be speechless and or to, to try the speechlessness yeah. or whatever, so we can keep going. But it we're going overtime, so we get. To... Yeah, this is this is the kind of game that's a good one to watch. But anyway, it's on the lineup. You got you lead off double Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera is exempt from my rant right mm -hmm. now because he's hitting everything. Yeah, but much. guys still have everything to that he in. gets. Hit. Yeah, every chance you can't. Miguel Cabrera can only mm -hmm. do so much. And they intentionally walked him in the first inning. Yeah, today. I saw. I saw that you you said that. And and they pitched around him more times than that. He walked twice, and neither of them he saw anything remotely good to hit. But after that, I mean, he hit he ropes the leadoff double in the thirteenth inning, right? And you're thinking, okay, you've got a guy in scoring nobody position, out. nobody out. The very least you can do, move him over to third and hit a fly ball if what that's if, if you can't what get if a freaking hit. Or show okay? up to bat? Very first mm -hmm. pitch. Brennan Bosch is up. Very first pitch. He oh, pops man. out. Unbelievable. And at this point, I'm, there's no, no, no mm -hmm. excuse for that. 